In this quick start tutorial video, we will learn how to add a sense of physical depth to our image using the volumetric environment effects in V-Ray Next. Here I have opened up the project file called 05 Environment Effects Start, which you can find in the downloaded assets for this tutorial available from the link in the description. Okay, to begin, let's start an interactive render to get a feel for our project here. Note that I have also got denoising enabled with the NVIDIA AI denoiser for a very fast preview. As you can see, we have the house we used in the first two quick start tutorial videos, just rendered from a different angle. We also have a mountain in the background, but it feels a bit too close to us. This is because in the real world, as the distance between an object and the viewer increases, the contrast between the object and its background decreases, creating a sense of depth in the perspective. Let's see how we can use V-Ray's powerful volumetric effects to simulate that depth in our images. Let's expand the right-hand flyout menu and enable the volumetric environment toggle. Now, right away, you'll see that this starts to create the much-needed depth in our image. Let's take a closer look here at the settings to see how we can refine our result. The volumetric environment type has two different effect options, aerial perspective and environment fog. Both types can be used to simulate fog, dust, smoke, or other tiny particles floating in the atmosphere. The environment fog is more powerful and capable of producing volumetric shadows. Meanwhile, the aerial perspective calculates faster, but is more limited in its application. By default, we are rendering with the aerial perspective type, so let's start by changing some of its settings. First, let's adjust the visibility range and try something like 50,000. This parameter determines the distance in meters at which the atmosphere absorbs the light coming from the objects behind it. Lower values will make the atmosphere appear more dense and therefore foggier, whereas higher values will reduce the effect of the aerial perspective, making the image more visible. All right, the effect right now is a bit too subtle for my taste. Let's draw a render region so we can get a faster preview and do some comparisons. Then, let's lower the visibility to 15,000. This is somewhat better, but again, the effect is still too mild. Let's draw another render region, and then lower the visibility to 5,000 so we can make the atmosphere more dense. Okay, let's disable the render region for a moment to get a feel for our image. Now, another very important setting here is the atmosphere height, which controls the height of the atmosphere layer in meters. Let's try lowering the atmosphere height value to something like 300. As you can see, this has reduced the height and adds some more contrast to the image, particularly in the sky itself. Now, we can see a more prominent gradient shading in the sky as it goes from light blue to an off-white color near the mountains. Okay, I'm liking how that looks, so let's stop the interactive render and then prepare to do a production render using the aerial perspective. I'll disable the interactive mode and make sure progressive is toggled off, then set the render output to 1200 by 1500 and lastly, switch the denoiser to the default V-Ray denoiser. Once we're ready with all of our settings, we can press render. As you can see, the effect is quite impressive, simply by enabling the aerial perspective and making a few tweaks to the visibility range and atmosphere height. Once you've got a result you're happy with, make sure to save your image by clicking on the disk icon at the top of the VFB. All right, now that we've seen how to set up the aerial perspective, let's take a look at how we can use V-Ray's environment fog to create a customized atmospheric result. To start, let's re-enable the interactive mode, return the render output to 640 by 800, and switch back to the NVIDIA AI denoiser. Now, this time we'll render from a different perspective, so let's switch over to the render camera fog scene. Then, go ahead and start an interactive render. Okay, you can see that we're now looking in the opposite direction. Let's switch the volumetric environment type from the drop-down menu to environment fog and see how we can use this to liven up our image here. You'll see right away that the shade from the trees on the wall of the house is more contrasty and pronounced, and we're also getting a subtle god ray effect on the right side as several beams of soft light are visible in the fog. However, my first impression here 
is that the fog is not dense enough in our render yet. Let's see how we can change that. The settings are somewhat similar to those of the aerial perspective. For example, you'll see the distance and height again, but there's also some additional controls that you can explore for added realism. Let's start by increasing the fog's height to something like 1000. Since the height determines the starting point of the fog along the z-axis, you can see that the fog appears thicker as it covers more of the sky, darkening our render significantly. Now it has become too dark, primarily because the overall light is not being scattered enough in the fog. To change that, we can simply enable the Scatter GI option. The Scatter GI option is a powerful tool in the environment fog settings, which enables global illumination to scatter within the fog. This immediately increases the light scattering around, which brightens up the image, as well as makes the fog appear more realistic at the cost of slowing down the render. If you wish, you can also drop down the Scatter GI rollout and tweak the Scatter Bounces parameter, but be careful not to go too high, as this can increase the render time. Okay, now let's enable the sphere lamp I have already set up in the Lights tab. This will add an additional artificial light source on the wall, helping to give our render a bit more detail and light to scatter in the fog. Now, you can see that the trees are realistically fading into silhouettes in the background, and yet, we're also getting plenty of detail in the foreground of the render. Alright, I think we're ready to do a production render now. I'm going to stop the interactive render, and let's prepare our settings for production. Once again, let's disable interactive rendering and make sure progressive is toggled off, set our render output to 1200 by 1500, switch the denoiser to the default V-Ray denoiser, and when ready, press render. Okay, once the render is complete, don't forget to save it from the VFB by clicking on the disk icon at the top. And there you go. Now you've seen how you can incorporate either the V-Ray Aerial Perspective or the V-Ray Environment Fog into your renders to give your images some additional depth and realism in V-Ray Next.